Welcome everyone, it's Simon from Horma Studio. This is the first installment of our video webinar dedicated to the topic of 2D tree cutouts in the field of architectural visualization. Today's video about assessing when to use 2D tree cutout against 3D model and vice versa. I tried to make it as unbiased as possible and sort of that it reflects the, um, the present market, but of course it's subject to change over time. So let's have a look at it. For the 2D cutouts, I think there are the main pro is basically the non-destructive aspect of it. If you're dealing with clients that change their mind or if you just want to have like maximum flexibility, having 2D, like relying on 2D cutouts is the best way to go because you can always turn your layer on and off and change something at the last minute, which is something a bit more complicated with 3D. It is also easy to test several scenarios because you just have to throw all your cutouts in a single PSD and test out several iterations and like you can easily uh, mix and match stuff. So it's really fine. Like you can even relink all your smart objects if you want to change all the trees to a, another kind, etc. So it's quite good. I think it also allows for more artistic freedom because it has this sort of flexibility that uh, enables you to take one tree and change its shape and change its foliage a little and change the size of it and put it exactly the way you want and sort of compose your image really in an interactive way. That is something that I think ArcVis artists really like. And finally, you can still create like quite a bit of variety from a single cutout, which is something that is quite important so that you don't get the idea of looking at the same tree over and over again. There are a couple of cons for 2D cutouts, which is which you have to take into account. The main one, or one of the main one, is the um, is the time it takes to blend your cutout inside your image seamlessly, because this is the extra step you won't have if you're dealing with 3D. Although you will see that once you optimize your workflow, it can be quite easy. But still, this is an extra step. It is also subject to errors because. You don't know exactly what size your tree is and where it is in your image. So you can easily end up with um, an oversized tree at some somewhere in your image. And also you can sometimes forget to reflect it properly in the windows because you actually don't know it was supposed to reflect it that way. So it's a bit complicated. It is also not fit for every perspective. If you're dealing with aerial views, you're going to have a hard time finding like the, the perfect tree because usually cut out trees are from like a street level, if I may say. And sometimes when you're dealing with a, like a, a set of images that is around a particular place, it is sometimes complicated to find like, say you have like a patio with a, a couple of trees inside. It's complicated if you're turning, like rotating around this patio to get like the same tree cut out, but change them so that you don't see that it's exactly the same, but you understand that it's the same tree. That would be, wouldn't be a problem with a 3D because you just uh, rotate around uh, a 3D model, so it's easy. If we look at the 3D model trees now, well, the main pros is, of course, is that they're going to be perfectly blended in their surrounding. They're going to cast the shadows that is perfectly accurate regarding the, the sun orientation. They're going to have they're going to be perfectly reflected in all the reflective surfaces, where uh, whether they're uh, windows or the ground or whatever. And they're always going to be at the right scale. Like even though you can overscale them, if you know your tree model is 10 meters, it means that every time you see it in your image, it's going to be 10 meters, which is a good thing. The other big good thing is that it is good for unconventional views. So if you're dealing with aerial views or like uh, when you're looking really downward uh, on a specific object, it's really going to be easy to have the tree look normal. And finally, it is easy to create a wide variety uh, from a single 3D model because on top of all the different things you can do in 2D, you can actually rotate the the tree itself which is a good thing because you can have like many many more uh, iterations although it's still gonna like you're still gonna be able to spot that it's the same tree if you use it way too often in terms of cons i think the main one is the absence of flexibility because once you render something you can't change anything like or you have to re-render it which can be a bit problematic because if you're dealing with tight deadlines 
you might not have the time to re-render something. The other problem is that they can look quite unrealistic. Even though we have like the photogrammetry technology now, there are uh, some trees that still don't look that good. Like you can still tell that they're CGI. So I wouldn't recommend having 3D trees for a um, foreground, for example, because it's always going to catch the eye because there's like not enough polys or stuff like that and it doesn't look that good even if you add a bit of DOF on it still. And finally, and still regarding the foreground, I think it's hard to, to compose your image properly with 3D models because it's less, it feels less natural and less instinctive uh, compared with the, the 2D workflow. And the other thing is that a foreground really is important in terms of like has a, big of, a, a lot of weight in the composition. And if you render it, it means you can't change it. So it has to be spot on because otherwise, if you have to re-render it, that's like a, a whole render to redo. So that, that can be really uh, problematic. Know that we basically know what it's good and what it's not good for. How do we know what to do? So I guess the, the basic and uh, most important thing you have to do in order to choose is to basically ask yourself those two questions. So. The first question is, how likely am I to be asked to change something on the vegetation or on the specific cutout I'm dealing with? If you're working for yourself and have time, it's okay because, uh, well, you have time, so it's you can do whatever you want and you know if you're happy with the tree or not. But if you're dealing with a client, it can sometimes be a bit tricky because uh, you have to deal with their own deadlines and you never know like if you're actually gonna have time to re-render the whole thing. And that's the second question is that how much time will it take for me to make these changes and can I dedicate this time to the specific task in my schedule or don't I have uh, other stuff to do instead of this? Depending on the, the question, the, the, the answers you have for these two questions, you're gonna be able to assess which workflow to go to use. Although there's like one thing I think you can like optimize a workflow in order to basically combine the best of both worlds. So what we'll do now is look at how you can optimize your workflow in order to keep maximum flexibility while keeping a like high realism uh, output. So here you have like a simple scene with a tree, uh, a sphere that reflects the, the scene. And here, this is like a simple concrete uh, concrete wall that could be like any facade and uh, the grass on the floor. So the idea here is that if I were to render it the way it is right now, it will look like uh, this. So we would have like the tree, the cast shadow, the reflection, and, uh, and basically that's it. The idea here is that in order to keep maximum flexibility, I want to be able to change the tree. So what I, because maybe if, if it were, if it is a facade, a specific facade, I want to be able to maybe see some part of it that at the moment I don't see, and I'm not sure it's going to be like that. So I want to be able to have like more flexibility. What I can do to do that is to actually select the tree, go into right click, go into object properties, and unclick on the visible to camera. I keep it renderable, but by changing the visible to camera, what I do is that when I render it, I have the cast shadow, I have the reflection, but I don't have the tree anymore, which means what I can do is basically put any tree in place and have something that has like a realistic cast shadow. Of course, you have to be careful with two things. The first one is that you have to use something where the foliage that sort of looks like the ones you were using in the 3D. And if you're dealing with the reflection, you have to make sure that the reflection sort of makes sense because you don't want to use like a pine tree here because it wouldn't make sense to have this sort of reflection and this sort of um, cast shadow. So that's the only thing. But that's the thing, like by using this sort of really simple trick, you can like anytime you have like a tree in front of a facade and you're not sure, what you're supposed to do with it, what you can do is actually um, play around with this trick. You can also sometimes want to not have the the, sh the shadows because it's too, like you're not sure you want to cast shadows on the facade and you want to be able to have more flexibility when you 
and Photoshop them, but you still want to keep like, for example, the reflection so that you have like the reflection of all the trees surrounding in the, um, in the windows of the facade or stuff like that. So it's really like play around with it. The other thing that is really cool is that this, uh, these properties you do are also uh, work also for a forest pack. So even if you use forest pack, you're going to be able to have the same thing, which means instead of having like all the trees, you can have all the cast shadows and all the reflection and basically all the informations you want, but still be able to put all the trees one by one in post-production for maximum flexibility. I think now you have well all the cards in hand to maximize your workflow and efficiency when it comes to vegetation management. So I'll see you in the next video of the webinar to see a little bit more how to choose wisely your cutout. Cheers, guys.